So what if I told you the next Amazon, the next YouTube, like a genuinely massive company is being built right now on a network most people never even heard of. Here's exactly what's going on. While everyone's distracted, OpenAI, Google, Microsoft, they're in an all out war right now, but it's not for your attention, it's for compute. Raw computation power to run the best AI. And here's the part that should make you feel uncomfortable. Whoever wins that war controls AI and whoever controls the AI controls what you see, what you think, what gets filtered before it even reaches you. But there's something else happening that no one's really talking talking about. There's a decentralized network called the Tensor. Basically an AI infrastructure that isn't owned by anyone. No single company can censor it, shut it down, or decide what it's allowed to say. And just like Google became the foundation that Amazon and YouTube and Facebook were built on, the Tensor is starting to spawn its own generation of applications. One of them is called Sunday Bar. They're building AI agents, not chatbots. Actual autonomous workers that remember everything, work around the clock, and don't answer to a corporation. So here's the question that's been stuck on my head in five years are we going to be using ai that actually works for us or are we just the product again because this whole battle for decentralized intelligence it's not some future thing it's happening right now and honestly most people are completely asleep on it anyway let me show you what's actually being built here now i must say this has to be one of the most interesting subnets i've covered so far I mean, the company is literally listed here on the London Exchange. You can go do the research yourself. And this is Sun Sunday Bar Subnet 121. Um, we'll get into exactly what this subnet is. Make sure in the comments, you let me know what your favorite thing about BitTensor. I wanna hear narratives, thesis, subnets, go crazy inside the comments. But if you're new and you're trying to really understand what BitTensor is as a, you know, network just picture google right we had amazon youtube we had all of these applications spawn off google and become billion dollar, dollar companies well we're entering the intelligence era where a lot of this intelligence is centralized and held by bottleneck and constraints uh but tensor awards us with a decentralized alternative where data and some of the best ai models won't be in the hands of just the elites, the centralized player, the entities, right? To create bottlenecks where us as retail can't really, you know, you know, get the benefits of this artificial intelligence economy. But this is why BitTensor allows a marketplace or anybody with an idea, a high quality idea, can bring that idea to life and serve with quality usefulness. And um, I really, really like that the subnets are starting to work together i was watching um the podcast earlier salute to the podcast i believe subnet 121 and the ceo they were doing a podcast and really talking about how they're working with other subnets and this is how we're going to make read law actually come become a reality for BitTensor. so for me i don't really like to focus on the price action of BitTensor. i look at the long game i'm already seeing some of the biggest players some of the same guys that were bullish on bitcoin back in the day uh, have that same conviction on BitTensor. so uh let's talk about subnet 121 i'm gonna also show you guys the tools that i'm using to pretty much go over these subnets um, because i like to really you know go over over everything i will say this that they don't have a code on the github or i would have went over the code also with this video but uh they're uh outsourcing these agents uh from a pretty uh reputable uh, company here letta uh where you know you can build these agents with long-term memory so if you ever used chat gpt then you ever tried to build out a thesis or solve a problem or provide a solution uh you might have came back the next day and tried to continue where you left off and hey it seemed like the ai forgot well you won't have those problems with the subnet 121 sunbars agents because again they already come equipped with agents that have long-term memory so that right there is huge um when you think about the competitors we're going to be talking about product market fit uh total addressable market we're going to be talking about all of that so but i want to make that clear because i know a lot of the the developer people like to know you know uh, where's the github where's the code and again feel free to uh 
ask questions. Let's get into what this subnet actually is. I created a complete guide here to Sunday Bar, uh, understanding how AI agents are becoming the new workforce and why early believers in BitTensor subnets are positioned like Amazon and Google. So think of BitTensor like the internet. In the 2000s, Google was the infrastructure that powered discovery. Amazon was an application built on that infrastructure. Today, the same opportunity exists. A lot of these subnets um, position themselves for the future of the intelligence era. We're finding early applications on BitTensor the same way investors found on Am Amazon through Google. So remember, remember, I know a lot of people struggle with the idea of decentralized intelligence. We got to start throwing the AI up out of there. It's bigger than just AI. What subnet 121 is doing, it says one AI agent continuously improving for real business and work. Sunday Bar isn't building another chat bot. They're building a generalist commercial AI agent, a single AI solution that works across multiple enterprises workflows without custom development for each. So now this is huge. This is in theory, one agent that can pretty much do anything. And the cool thing about this is that this is going to allow a lot of those entities and companies to be fully autonomous. And this is this is what any business owner really, really wants, especially in 2026. Chatbots follow scripts. They have no memory. Uh, they wait for our input. They can't take action. Right. They need human to in, humans to intervene. Copilot, they kind of assist what we do, right? They suggest the next action sessions have memory, but only in that specific session. Um, but still, we make the final decisions and um, th does per se speed up your work. But imagine if you had an AI agent that you told it what to do and it just did it. Let's and we're we will be getting into this artificial general intelligence era where you can upload two thousand, three thousand bucks and say, hey, these are the APIs I want you to uh, connect to the application. Go build me out a, a, a hundred billion dollar business, right? And it's going to build it out. It's going to connect the APIs. It's going to create the entire workflow front end and back end. And we can just sit up with our feet up. That's where we are headed. But we're not there just yet. Getting these autonomous workers that plan, execute tasks have persistent memory, make decisions independently and complete the entire workflow. And I would love this, man. You know what I mean? If I can, you know, create some AI agents to, to really, really help me as a content creator become more productive, I'm all for it because I already use AI tools. And I told you guys, you know what I'm saying? I sit here and just, I mean, I created this. I created, literally, I created this, this guide here I literally coded this guy here, like literally did this, right? This is not something that I found. I created this myself off my personal research. So the enterprise AI agent wave is here. 40% of enterprise applications will and will be embedded AI agents by 2026. Uh, $450 billion market um, by 2035. 50% of workers will manage AI agents by 2029. 33% of UX will shift to agents front ends by 2028. 30% enterprises software revenues will be from agents. So it's like, man, these agents are going to come in and just like increase these businesses production and workflows and just make it so efficient. Now I was hanging around the website and I did know that they do have a lot of different AI agents. And you can go check this yourself, guys. You can go look up all of the agents that they have. They have about 200 now. I know it said 174, but now they got about 200 different agents that serve all type of different needs. So you can literally like search for any type of agent, right? You got the uh, Rossi AI agent, uh, human like 24 seven AI, a uh, voice agent, AI prompter tools, um, letter, the sidekick, your friendly guide to building. Some of these are free. Some of these require you to pay. So there you go. Path to revenue. You can go to the website. I'll put all the links in the description and kind of like check out uh, all of the different agents that they have. Uh, most AI forgets everything. Sunday bars agents don't. So, you know, here's an example of how Sunday bar agent um, works and it's just like i said right you can literally come the next day and continue your work on whatever task that may be and the agent did not forget you don't got to go and up you know uh, give it a whole new brief the next day because 
AI agents, you know, in these chat bots, they literally don't have memory. That's a huge bottleneck. And I can go into a whole bunch of investments with just that. But, you know, I want to focus here on Sunday Bar. Why decentralized equals better agents. Now, this is the big thing. This is why I value BitTensor so much, because I feel like we're going to only get the best of the best as far as quality. Um, instead of one company building in a silo, global developers compete to improve the same agent. Open objective evaluation means only the best improvements make it to production. So um, if a business submits a brief, you know, a whole bunch of miners, you know, go over the brief and create AI agents. The AI agents that get scored the best by the validators wins the prize. So you got a whole bunch of different miners, like tech, straight bot coders, all type of engineers, literally trying to win this one bounty by providing the highest quality AI agent for that specific brief. So now your customers gonna be happy. They gonna spread the word, tell more customers, and they gonna come back. That's how I look at it. And US improvement never stops. This accelerates progress beyond what any single company can achieve alone. And man, and this goes for almost any subnet that has this type of competition. Just thinking for a person like myself that builds workflows and it's really hard sometimes to actually find clients that these workflows fit. So I can actually just snap a screenshot of my workflow. And this is the cool thing. I can literally like snap a screenshot here of my workflow and I can head over here to Sunday Bar and actually list it so I can list my workflow uh, which is a pre-built automation so that one specifically i, I don't remember what that I, I believe it was like altcoin signals and setting out signals for altcoin season this is a good way for me to actually find clients so you know i can actually take uh, that screenshot and bam i can literally sell my workflow through the marketplace of sunday bar which is pretty cool because i'm pretty sure they probably make some type of revenue off the fees or whatever that may be but now i can outsource my workflows or even prompts uh to clients that might want to use these and man to clients that actually want to use these so that's actually pretty good the, the marketplace is set up really really good and here's what makes sunday bar different from every other ai project that's coming soon this is actually usable right now a business can go to sunbar.ai today pick an agent customize it exactly for what they need whether that's screening resumes handling customer support managing their sales pipeline and deploy it not in six months not when the roadmap is finished but now we're talking enterprise ready tools real workflows real customization a company can take one of these agents train it on their specific processes plug it into their systems and let it run and that's ready right now that's the difference between a white paper and an actual product so salute to that team and what they're doing and again i always focus on path to revenue and this is a perfect example how these ready-made tools are already available for the public and of use the future of work is autonomous so i really like what i'm seeing from this you know uh, uh subnet uh they have ai agents that do real work um hr automation sales development marketing ops customer services it operations and even crypto trading and like i said guys go watch the podcast go watch the ceo listen to what she's saying see if her actions and what the subnet is doing is matching what they're selling right just don't watch my video go and do your research an easy way to understand these subnets i would recommend going to subnet ai they literally have everything you can see that the team is docs they put the world roadmap they even have the treasury this is a really 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 good tool to track what's going on with the subnet again i'll put the links in the description i also like talisman ai to look at subnet 121 now this is one of the things i would like to see uh and have a little bit more clarity about um as far as you know the the, the net flow currently is negative as far as the tile flow now 
this is a pretty successful uh you know a subnet so far you can literally see by the charts here but you know again after the hype after the videos you want to ask yourself is the subnet subnet that you're buying is it profitable right is it generating revenue that can outpace the overhead right now you can see that it's currently not that doesn't mean it's a bad subnet the path to revenue hasn't caught up with the overhead that doesn't mean it won't change um you can see this is in a accumulating stage uh the, the chart is actually going crazy you can see the chart going crazy let's actually get to the score let me know in the comments how you feel about the alphanomics on sunday bar would love to know you guys opinion but let's get to the score so this is the sunday bar scorecard um this is not financial advice but this is an investment viability assessment and the score came out as a 7.7 .7 out of 10 product market fit 8 out of 10 gartner validates 40 percent enterprise ai asian adoption by 2026 so the time is now a 174 plus agents already on the marketplace real usage not vaporware love that letter persistent memory solves the number one complaint about ai tools we talked about this enterprise adoption still early needs more case studies so we need more people talking about it more people you know given uh the, you know talking about their experience using it you know more word of the mouth we need more of that total addressable market was nine out of ten it's addressing a 450 billion dollar ai agent market projected by 2035 which has a massive runway and could create massive tailwinds every business function is a target so this is a large audience base this is huge this is what you want hr sales marketing it finance all targeted audience Decentralized positioning captures anti-big tech sent sentiment way. So <laughs> I talk about decentralized intelligence, decentralized alternatives, anti-surveillance. So guys, there's going to be a whole bunch of liquidity to capture that these centralized entities just cannot capture within BitTensor. And the global market, which means no geographic limitations, this can be used by anywhere right the total addressable market is the world love it love it all right now path to revenue this is what my model said that i built and i, I based my model off a lot of stuff i can't really tell you guys because i plan on um selling this model that i built but best believe that like the stuff that i put into this model crazy all right so path to revenue and profitability six out of ten payments v1 live actual revenue infrastructure is in place lse listing provides legitimacy and capital access that's a huge thing remember i was telling you about we haven't really seen the deep deep pockets show up but this could possibly be one of the deep pockets right here that uh, one of those subnets that don't rely on emissions but right now our model is saying it currently relies on emissions about 44,000 a day needs to transition. Subscription and usage revenue metrics, not yet public, but they are talking about it. They are talking about these paths to revenue when you watch the podcast. So just keep that in mind. But the path isn't yet clear and the execution risk remains, which means this is still an early stage. So 7.7 out of 10 let me know what you think about this subnet let me know what your favorite subnet is it's your boy crypto million i'll see you in the next one